Welcome to the Heal Thrive Dream Podcast, where trauma survivors become healthy thrivers. Each month will feature a theme in the trauma recovery and empowerment field. To promote your recovery, healing, and learning how to build dreams, here is your host, Karen Robinson, transformational coach and therapist. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Heal Thrive Dream Podcast. Today, our guest is Erin Dalia. Yay, I got it right. <laughs> I was so worried about butchering her last name. I had to practice it a few times, but I know I said it right. That's awesome. Um, Erin is a lifestyle coach, a motivational speaker, and she's got a lot of other things. I'm going to let her introduce herself. So welcome, Erin. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to uh, be able to kind of share and grow together on your podcast. Thank you. Yeah. So go ahead and tell our audience all the other um tricks and trades that you're, you're able to do for anyone? Yeah, so um, I think along my kind of 15-year path of healing, like practically going after healing, I've accumulated um, a lot of different certifications. So, you know, I started off as a licensed massage therapist in the state of Florida because I am very empathetic in that way, and I love that touch, that, you know, kind of space that we create together when you have a client um, who's looking to, you know, heal through touch. And then I became a Reiki master because I really enjoy energy work and processing of that intensity, which for on my healing path through my trauma, um, you know, really kind of edged me in all of my studies to be at that mind, body, soul connection, kind of healing, um, you know, becoming a meditation teacher. Uh, the type of yoga I teach is also very uh, Hatha and Raja based. So it's very breath work and meditation and motion. Um, I cooked professionally for years. I've been a chef because I feel that, you know, food is such an integral part of processing of, you know, being a human spirit in a human body on this planet right now. So that's also really, um, kind of fun. And then I'm trying to think, yeah, I became a, a certified life coach just to kind of package it all in together and, um, an ordained minister just kind of for that ability to complement my Reiki in certain areas um, of giving kind of some more spiritual, divine um, guidance and perspective for those who seek it. So just trying to be of service to the community through my own path as well. You are one well-rounded <laughs> woman. Wow, it's impressive. So awesome. Yeah. So my um, question is, is you mentioned that you're a trauma survivor and that's um, our audience's um, our woman who also recovering from trauma. What about your um, trauma? Are you comfortable with sharing? So please don't share anything that you haven't made public or not open to share. No, no. What are you? I've actually in the last like say three or four years, I've really come to terms with being able to be public about what happened. So um, as a child, just before I turned three years old, I had an at home accident where I fell face first into my sleeping Great Dane's mouth and he stood up and his canines locked through the bottom part of my jaw out the side of my face and came down on the top of my head. Um, thankful he didn't close his head mouth. Um, otherwise, I don't think I'd be sitting here, but I did proceed to bleed out. I proceeded to have a exceptionally spiritual um, interaction for in which I think later in life, I learned this more than as a child. Um, There's kind of like a soul swap almost where part of me changed in inherently as a child. And when I came back, I was wide awake for the hours that they were sewing my face closed because I was not um, due to the nature, the location, and how much blood I had already lost. They weren't able to put me under. And everyone just kind of at that time, so we're at the early 80s, thought, oh, you know, she's super young. No one is going, she, she's not gonna remember anything because who remembers anything at that age? Well, I'd agree with them that mentally, I didn't really, in my mind, have those vivid memories outside of certain aspects, certain dream aspects, but physically and emotionally, my cells had remembered everything. Mm -hmm. And because I wasn't able to tangibly connect and rationalize what was happening, um, I ended up with an undiagnosed PTSD and I started having uncontrollable seizures anytime I was triggered. So it wasn't like I could just say, oh, when I ate this or, oh, when I did this, it's like, I could be driving and I could see something and I would be triggered. I could be in the movies and I would see something and I would be triggered. I could be trying to get something on my body healed from a Western medical practitioner and there would be a needle or there would be that smell or there'd be that color. 
and I would be triggered and I would have some variation of a petite mal seizure, which when you have them and they're reported, um, you know, I can't drive for a year. I wasn't able to do my background work to become a doctor, which is what I originally wanted to do with my life, um, be a Western medical doctor, um, you know, and it really changed the arc of my life. And, you know, coming out of teens and being rebellious and being in my 20s and disassociating for all of the things, bleeding on everybody who was around me who, you know, wanted to be my friend or be in my life and not really getting until the end of my 20s, early 30s that I found my path through massage therapy. I found a bunch of people who understood what was happening to me, um, why Western medicine couldn't explain it and why, you know, I was never going to go on medication for it as it wouldn't have worked, um, and inevitably leading me down the rather rocky road of being seizure-free for 10 years and having the tools necessary through all of those traits and, and trades that I had talked about earlier, um, really using them as a focus for me to reconnect my mind to my emotional and physical self at that point where I'm constantly being triggered in my environment, wherever I was and not going into full seizure and intentionally triggering myself in a safer space where I could explore and release that, that, that pent up old energy from the accident, from any other time I had had a seizure so that I'm not in that same place anymore. So now when I'm, you know, at a Marvel movie or I'm seeing something in the theaters you know, and they've got this surgery scene, I'm not having a seizure in the middle of the theater anymore. I'm able to ground, breathe, go into my practice right away, subdue, release the energy and intensity, embrace the moment, not disassociate from it, and then move forward. And now it might take a little bit, it might take a few you know, minutes or an hour, but it's better than anything that I've been in the past. So in that way, I've incorporated my trauma and my triggered response into the pattern of my life, which is why I, I do a lifestyle coaching, mm -hmm. um, especially for trauma related things, because I, I realized on this path that there's so many programs that try and tell you to resolve and heal and your trauma goes away and whatever. And I look at it and I'm like trauma like that for the people that I've worked with who've had anything from like car accidents or palate recovery, open heart surgery, cancer, you know, that, that fear, that opportunity to be triggered is always there. It doesn't just go away just because you figure out how to get through it once or twice. And if it does, I mean, que bueno, I'm, I'm super happy for you. But if it doesn't, you know, if you, if you sweep it under the carpet or you try and gloss it over, then you kind of set yourself up for it to repeat and maybe in a way that might not be as handleable. I don't know if that's the right word for it. <laughs> Um, and so that's kind of why I set off and I've been creating a program that, um, and a community of people who can rely on each other, who can connect back into each other, who can follow the steps that I have followed, create their own version of it that's usable for them. It doesn't require you to have things. It doesn't require you to have pills or herbs or oils. It's just you. And because that's all you really have in that moment. And it took me a really long time to learn it. So I'm hoping to help a lot of people maybe skip the 15 years in between. That would probably be awesome. Yeah, so you mentioned some steps. Are there any that you can share with us today? Like one or yeah. two tidbits? Yeah. So um, my, my general teachings and coursework is based on three things. It's empowerment, elevate, and evolve. And in any situation, when we take the time to empower ourselves with the truth about what happened, whether you know you accept that it was the environment and it was your path to learn it, whether you invited it or not invited it, because that seems to be a huge point at which a lot of trauma, um, you know, survivors and people who live with PTSDs, they get back to that that circle that's like, oh, I didn't do this to myself. I don't deserve right. this, and right. you know, we sabotage ourselves in that way a lot. So you know, really empowering yourself to say it out loud, to own it, and to accept it gives you the power to then elevate the way we make choices and how we perceive our environment. Because when you live in a PTSD trauma circle, you're always making decisions based out of that very limited section where you only give yourself the power when it feels comfortable. And so you're never actually growing, you're changing. So you're not really reaching a point of success 
in your life or in living, you always find a place that's maybe comfortable and limited. And you convince yourself sometimes that it's okay because it maybe doesn't push you towards your triggers, or maybe it, you know, kind of gives you all the best parts of having to deal with your trigger or, you know, provide for yourself instead of actually just freely living and enjoying your life and evolving because not every opportunity you get after breaking that pattern is meant for you. And a lot of times, and it took me, I think the longest part of my journey has been understanding what part of opportunity is provided to me from my environment are truly in alignment with who I am and, you know, where I want to be and what am I focusing on? You know, not just my mantra, not just, you know, my word, but like in the day to day, how do you make those decisions, especially when you're in a triggered state? Right. Have you found that your work not only helps people that have had trauma because of accidents or physical traumas, have you found your work to help women um, also with, you know, emotional abuse or domestic violence, sexual abuse? Yes. And I've had a few cases recently, actually, of clients who have come in who are, you know, physical abuse, emotional abuse, uh, narcissistic relationship abuse, Mm -hmm. um, and other, you know, um, types of, you know, even family abuse. And I kind of like say that outside of it, because the abuse from a parent or a child to a parent has also come forward with a lot of mothers lately where they've, for whatever reason, let down some of their healthier boundaries because it was, you know, it's their child, right? Mm -hmm. And the work is still the same because inevitably the trigger, the emotional trigger, you can still unwind it and understand it and grow from it when you become so in tune and aligned with where it came from, why you put it there, you know, what is that fear? What is that thing that's holding you? you know, and breaking the pattern of how a narcissist or an emotionally abusive situation or person or persons, because sometimes there's plural in there, it programs you and it programs you to get into a point where you're surviving. Like you, you get comfortable with being comfortable and you convince yourself that walking on eggshells, um, living that way, perceiving the environment that way um, is comfortable. And even though somewhere inside you can identify with the fact that you know that there's more and you might want it, but there's that, how do I get from here to there? Like, it seems like it's really like this big Mm -hmm. instead of maybe an acceptable big. And so breaking that down into smaller steps, um, you know, different meditations, different yogas, different journaling, different mindset activities where in a safer environment, we're practicing the healthiest version of that and exploring why it feels uncomfortable and where that comes from and then recycling it and using it as a pillar to grow on, you know, using it as a way to create this new bridge of how to exist, acknowledging the trauma emotionally and not being reactive to it anymore, like waiting for it to dissipate enough where you can then be like, Oh, okay, that was, that was my moment. I was really not aligned with myself. I gave myself the space to just go through the motions that I know I need to go through sometimes. And now I'm ready to make my decision because now I can look at it clearly. You know, this part's really not in alignment with me. I'm going to pass or this part's really in alignment for me, but I've got to negotiate it a little bit differently. And I know it sounds excessively um, technical, but when you really kind of break it down, when we jump to conclusions, when we act out of this urgency that we put on ourselves because of the expectation that's always been there from the emotional abuse, from being conditioned to not believe in ourselves, to not have faith in our process, to find value in who we are unless we fit into a box, essentially. Um, It's just beautiful what people do when they do that. It's amazing to watch families grow and to find women who find their voice, you know, who find their power and do whatever makes them feel great and help them discover what that passion is. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. And I, I like you have found that no matter the trauma that we're treating, all those reactive responses, all the symptoms, the, the body um, manifestations of trauma, it all, it heals with not heals. I use the word heal a lot. It doesn't mean it goes away. Um, I think 
think it my maybe a better word is uh comfort yeah comfort what's happened might be another right word for it yeah you know it's it's making it more palatable almost like it makes it to a point where you know it's not a repeat it's something new and it opens up new opportunity and it opens up the option for the individual person um to learn from it and to make stuck. wisdom yeah, yeah. To create wisdom. I mean, and that's really, you know, if you want to go to the path of the gurus, you know, mm -hmm. all of our experiences are opportunities to create wisdom so that we can grow from it and create from it. Awesome. Um, one of my favorite questions I like to ask my guests are, are there books that have really inspired you on your, on your journey to become all the things that you are, the minister, the Reiki master, the massage therapist, the coach? Any books that you really enjoyed during your path? I have, and some of them are incredibly technical and some of them are a little bit more, um, I like to say imaginative. So one of my favorite books is The Magnus of Stroblos. And I love reading that book because the Magnus himself and the story that he portrays in the book as kind of like what I would consider a quantum healer. He... He lived a life that was about the intention of your choices as a combination of being spiritually divine and being a human being and being in this material world and this density and living it as a bridge. And so a lot of how he helped and how he was, like how he chose to live his life was based on that intentionality because your mind, your thoughts have so much power here right? That's how we create it. They inspire our emotions and then you're inspired to physically act on that. So that's probably my first. I love reading Malcolm Gladwell mm -hmm. and he's an incredibly technical writer because he studies social proofs, so to speak, about the behaviors, about how people actually choose, how, where we get these kind of sentences. And Blink is possibly my favorite because I really learned from a very dry read. Um, I, I enjoyed it too, though. <laughs> we, okay, okay, so you get it. Yeah, all right. You know what I mean? Like that you're as 90% accurate in the first 60 seconds as if you had, you know, six months to kind of play out a choice. And I read that book at a time where I was really struggling personally between my steps of elevating my choices and actually evolving, you know, practicing, playing out, making better choices in the moment, really learning what was in alignment with me and not just the ooh shiny of materialism and comfort and intuitively starting to listen to my body and then my emotions and how my mind was reacting to it. And it actually set me off to go and do a hundred hours of silent non-moving meditation at the Vipassana hours. Mm -hmm, over 10 days and it's broken up, but it's what Siddhartha Buddha was considered enlightenment. Uh, his enlightenment path, like when he sat under the Bodhi tree, the process for in which he did that, uh, did that, what he discovered is called Vipassana. And you can go to any center, well, maybe not at the current moment, because I think there's still some um, nuances with health concerns, but uh, you go and you practice and it's 10 days in complete silence and you're meditating throughout the day in our multiple hour blocks in a non-moving, just breath meditation. And you know, when I read the book and then I went and I did this practice, I realized how even internally what we choose to consider real and the way that our body reacts and then our emotions react and then our mind compensates or the mind starts, like it's always some connect the dots different mm -hmm. for each response version of that. And when I recognized that and I was actually able to apply it, it, it shifted everything for me. Because I, I was able to overcome that, for me, my uh, cover emotion was anger, and I felt it all in my stomach. And so as soon as my stomach got triggered, it would be so painful that I wanted to stop doing whatever I was doing, and I would just walk away. I wasn't creating wisdom. I was just, boom. And I, I see gonna, it I was going to ask you which emotion. Um, oh, yeah. That, yeah, so that's interesting you say anger. It feels, and anger feels a little safer than some of the others. Exactly. Because anger means that you don't have to be vulnerable. Um, it means that you don't have to be honest because you can 
uh, rationalize and justify your response and behavior. And people generally react to, oh, you, I, I hurt you. I'm so sorry. Without you having to go and say, well, you know what? I let myself be hurt. I, I left myself open and raw there and I didn't create a healthy boundary. And so it was kind of like passive aggressively giving away power <laughs> so that I didn't have to actually do anything. Wow. And have you yourself written any books yet? I have not. And uh, I have been part asked of the plan? to. Yeah. It is part of the plan. Um, I, I want to write a book and I want to be able to captivate it, not just as a story of something that I've experienced, but in a meaningful way, like an inspirational way. And I think that the more I get back into public speaking, and um, building the, the community that I've been working on, the Chaos Circus, that I'm kind of learning those steps, like how to take it from it's just my personal story and here's my life to, yeah, I learned this and this was why and here's a step that yeah. you can achieve to do it. Some action steps, yeah. 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 I enjoy books that not only share a story, but share some ideas and what the, you know, the reader can do or the listener can do. So that's awesome. Okay, and um, tell us a little more about your coaching practice or courses that you're developing. Like, who's a good fit? How long are they? What do they look like? So currently, I have two courses that I, um, at this point, will be published. Um, it's a, a, and I'm looking for the right words because you only get so many characters in that little field there. But essentially, it's an emotional recovery uh, meditation series. That's six classes that's, you know, every three days you get released a new class that help you take those three steps at home in your own environment and really dive deep. And the meditations take you to a place within yourself where you get to decide what you want to be real, where you get to say, okay, this is core who I am. I'm in alignment with this. This is giving me that feeling that my environment is not responsible for. I'm responsible for and building that and taking down the barriers that would normally prevent you from doing that. And then we have communities. So once a month, we're going to go live and we're going to deep dive some questions. The other one is, um, I'm calling it kind of a self-coaching course. It's a six week program where you get a new class with a homework, um, and some downloads to go with it. And it is, it's, it's for people who aren't quite ready to do a full one-on-one -on -one intensive in my four-week, you know, elite of exclusive program, right, where you get me and it's me. And I'm going to be like, hey, just so you know, knock, knock, that needs to change. <laughs> um, because I do find that a lot of people need a little bit slower. You know, they, they, they're not, they are just recognizing that they are, um, I hate saying victim, but they are, you know, a recipient of emotional abuse. They are, they are realizing that their PTSDs, whether diagnosed or undiagnosed, can be worked through naturally without a ton of medication. Um, you know, that there is a path, and they're starting to question that. And so that course definitely helps you explore a lot of where did this really start? Like, just not the physical part, maybe not just the emotional part, but where did the gateway actually start? And taking you through that process forward to break it down so that you stop repeating something that is causing harm and a lack of happiness in your life, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have, you know, the communities available. We're having um, within my app, there's a more poignant questions based on the program that you're in. And then we'll have a Discord community for more open and free-flowing conversation. Um, it will be kind of closed, so you do have to be invited to join it. Um, just because I want to make sure that we're a group of people helping each other, that we're providing a path forward that, you know, like myself, I am all natural seizure free. Um, I know a few people who have survived cancer on a, you know, let's say 75% natural process of self-discovery and a little bit of Western medicine, people who do it with digestive issues and immune issues. So anybody who's, who knows that they want more, and that they're not completely reliant on, let's say, the Western or pill-based mentality. They're not looking for that kind of process. Um, but they know it's inside of them and that they can unlock it themselves mm -hmm. with the help of us. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So how do people find you online? Ooh, the easiest way to find me and directly get a hold of me is erindalia.com. 
it's my website um, and this way you don't have to deal with a bunch of social handles depending on your level of online um, in which case you can book a free 30 minute discovery call to really deep dive and figure out what might be the best process for you within all of the teachings and courses I have available. Mm -hmm. um, you can find me on Instagram under mind me, M I N D M dot E dot E dot E standing for empower, elevate and evolve. Mm -hmm. Same thing on Facebook, LinkedIn, Clubhouse. Um, if you are on Clubhouse, I am in the Kaya Circus and doing classes throughout the week that are meditation-based, deep down uh, talks. It's a developing community still, so always welcome there. And if you want some of my free courses, you can join me on YouTube under Erin D'Elia um, for yoga classes, meditation classes, talks about processing grief, all that kind of fun stuff as well. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of content. So awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So any, thank you so um, much for having me. Yeah. Um, any parting um, words of encouragement or inspiration for our listeners? Absolutely. I would always say question everything that doesn't feel right inside because nothing outside of you is real. The only thing that is real where you have the power to make change is what's happening inside. And then find a path, ask questions, find teachers, read books, follow podcasts until you find somebody who you're like, oh, wow, that, that right there. I don't know how mm -hmm. they found that, but I would like that and go after it. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really wonderful. Heal or heal thyself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Erin, for being on today. Thank you for having me. And I hope you have a blessed week. Mm, you too. Thanks. Thank you for listening in today. Please join us next week, same day and time. Also, I would love for you to check out my website, healthrivedream.com.